Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about communication networks, in particular the CAN bus network. So if you have a car that is equipped with a CAN network and you hook up a scanner and you're unable to communicate, there are several things that you need to check and also in particular you need to understand how the network works so you can probably run a couple of tests. Here we have a block diagram of how a CAN bus network works. You have your OBD2 connector that has 16 pins and also your CAN network is connected at pin terminal 6 which is your high side and your terminal 14 which is your low side on the CAN bus network. The network is hooked up in parallel so you have several computers hooked up on the same network in parallel and there are two resistors inside a particular computer. In this case we have an ECM that has a resistor which is 120 ohms of resistance and then we have another computer here that's your body control module, your BCM, that has 120 ohms of resistance. If they are connected in parallel, if you connect your multimeter across terminal 6 and 14, you should be able to measure 60 ohms. If you do a basic ohms law and calculate, you should be able to get around 60 ohms. You might have a percentage of plus or minus uh, 1 ohm or 2, but in, you should be very close to 60 ohms. So one of the tests you can do first is terminal 4 and 5 on a OBD2 connector they have a ground it could be a chassis ground and it could be a battery ground so you want to make sure that those grounds are present terminal 16 you have battery voltage at all times being supplied through a fuse and goes to your OBD2 connector terminal 16 so one, that should be one of your first tests you should always do you want to make sure that you're getting voltage at terminal 6 and you're getting ground at terminal 4 and 5. So you can hook up your multimeter at terminal 5 and 16 and you should measure battery voltage. And if you move your meter across terminal 4 and 16, you should still measure battery voltage. That will indicate they have a good ground and a good voltage to the OBD2 connector. If those voltages are, if the voltage and ground are present, then and you still have a no communication issue, then you go and check the network. But if you're missing voltage, usually this fuse on most vehicles. Now this will be based on manufacturers. Some vehicles will use the fuse for the cigarette lighter, or some will use for accessories. And so you have to look at a wiring diagram and see what fuse is powering up the 16 pin just in case you're missing the voltage and go and check that fuse and if the fuse pop you gotta go and check why the fuse pop in the first place so that should be your first test checking for voltage and checking for ground at pin 16 for voltage and ground at terminal 4 and 5 so one of the things that you can use as tools is a multimeter you can use a multimeter to check for voltage to do a voltage test and to do a resistance test and ideally it's better also if with the meter you also use a breaker box this breaker box will have the 16 pins on the OVD2 connector so you plug in this to the OVD2 connector and you, you should have access to all 16 pins and with your meter you should be able to check every terminal that you want to test on that network here we have the OVD2 breaker box that is already connected to the OVD2 connector of the vehicle so now we should have access to all pins from number 1 to number 16 on the OVD2 connector and here's our multimeter you want to do a voltage test so you set your meter in volts DC you want to check ground at terminal 4 terminal 5 and battery voltage at terminal 16 so if I want to check terminal 4 and terminal 16 as my meter should read battery voltage in this case I'm reading 12.8 volts and if I want to test the ground at terminal 5 just move your lead to terminal 5 and it should be able to measure the same battery voltage so if you connect your multimeter from 5 and 16 or 4 and 16 and you get no battery voltage then the first thing you have to do is find out who is powering up that terminal in most cases you're going to find a fuse that is powering up that terminal and that should be your first test if that voltage is missing the vehicle would not communicate if the ground is missing the vehicle will not communicate so once you verify that terminal 4 and 5 are grounds and are present and terminal 16 is battery voltage and it's present and you have no communication with the vehicle then you need to go and check the network if you recall there's on the network hooked up in parallel you have two computers that might have a resistor known as a terminating resistor 
which is 120 ohms of resistance. In this case, the ECM and the BCM have those resistors. If you want to check the integrity of the network, one of the things you can do is do a resistance test. With the vehicle off, with the ignition off, all doors closed, and have access to the OBD2 connector, you want to be able to check resistance across 6 and 14. Now you want the vehicle to be off because you don't want a computer to be awake and you hook up your meter during that time. You don't want to cause any problems. So you want to make sure that you get an accurate reading and the system is off. So you wait, the network goes to sleep, and then you hook up your multimeter and measure resistance. The best way you can do, you can disconnect your battery to prevent any computer from waking up. So that way you can have access to the, the inside of the vehicle. So if the battery is disconnected, it's ideal to have the battery disconnected. You connect your multimeter across terminal six and 14. What you wanna see here is around 60 ohms of resistance. You might have a tolerance of about plus and one, minus plus and one ohm. So you might see around 61 ohms or 59 ohms in most vehicles. And some of them you'll be able to see the 60 exact. If you see 60 ohms, then the integrity of the network should be okay. If there's any other, if there's a no communication issue, you have to go a little bit further and see what's going on with the network. So let's give a couple scenarios of what might happen to the network if your resistance test fails. Just in case, for example, what will happen if you lose the resistor at ECM? Let's say the resistor, you have a break, an internal break on that terminator resistor. When you hook up your meter, you're not gonna measure 60 ohms because you lost that resistor. And on the network, if you recall, this is parallel. It's connected in parallel. So that means you only have one resistor connected on the network, which you will be able to see not 60, but 120 ohms of resistance. If you measure 120 ohms of resistance across six and 14, that means that you lost a terminator resistor. And that could be equipped inside of an ECM, or it could be inside a PCM, or it could be inside another computer. It could be as simple as an instrument cluster computer. So you gotta look at manufacturer's specifications. They will let you know exactly where those resistors are within that network. Okay, to do an ohms test across the network, you set your meter in ohms, and you wanna make sure that your meter is working properly, that your leads are okay. So every time here the meter says OL, that means overload, that means you have an open between these two terminals. Make sure that your meter works and your leads are okay. So touch your leads together. The meter should show you zero ohms of resistance. In this case, we have 0 0.1. That means you have 100 ohms of resistance within the leads. And some meters, you can actually zero out this. And some, if you can't zero it out, just keep in mind that value and that should be added up to your measurement. So here, we're gonna go across terminal 14 and terminal six. We're measuring 61 ohms of resistance. You want to see anything from 60 ohms plus or minus one ohm. That's the average you will see on most vehicles. But if you measure something as 120 ohms, that means you lost a resistor. So we're going to unplug a computer right now. In this case, we're going to unplug the ECM because we know that in this particular car that we're testing, the ECM has the internal resistor. So we're going to go and unplug the computer so you can see what happens. Okay, so right now we're connected at terminal six and 14 from the CAT network. Uh, the integrity of the network shows okay. We're about to unplug the ECM. The ECM has an internal resistor. If we lose that resistor, you should be able to see that change here in your meter. So we're going to unplug the ECM right now. And it gives 128.8 ohms of resistance. So that means we lost a resistor. So if you connect your multimeter across six and 14 and you measure 120 ohms of resistance, then that means that you lost a resistor. And if we plug in the computer back on, the resistance should go back to its normal state. Like you see here, 61 ohms. The scenario that could happen, the wires could potentially be touching together or the network could be shorting. So if you hook up your meter across six and 14, and the meter displays around zero ohms, that means that you could potentially have a computer that's hooked up in parallel, shorting out the two terminals together, or you could have the wires 
touching together. So one of the first things, steps you should be able to do is you can actually grab, go to each one of the computers and start unplugging a computer at a time. So if I unplug this ECM and the ECM is shorting the circuit internally, as soon as I unplug the ECM out of the circuit, because internally, if it's shorted and it touches those two wires together, that's gonna show you zero ohms of resistance. If I unplug the ECM, if that is the problem, my meter will display 120 ohms of resistance because you still have the resistor connected in series, in parallel. So, but if that's not the problem, once you unplug the ECM, you still get zero ohms of resistance, you go and unplug every other computer out of the circuit. So you go to the ABS, unplug it, and look at your resistance value. If the value comes back to the 60 ohms when you unplug the ABS, because the ECM was plugged back then, then you know that the ABS is the one shorting out your signal. If you unplug every computer out of the circuit and you still get zero ohms of resistance, that means you have wires somewhere on your harness, the wires touching together. And that's where your meter is showing you zero ohms of resistance. So that's where you'll be able to find with the ohms. The integrity of the circuit, are the terminals shorted together, or your Okay, so here's another scenario. If you connect your multimeter across 14 and 6, and your meter displays this, that's 0 0.2, that's 200 milliohms, when you're supposed to read that 60 ohms of resistance. So that's an indication that the wires are shorted together. Now this could be happening because a module could be shorting out the circuit or it could be wires touching together. So then your job as a tech is to try to figure out what's actually causing this particular short. One of the things you can also do is a voltage test. You can use your multimeter, grab your multimeter, hook it up to a good ground and touch the, the high side, terminal 6. The high side, usually this is a two wire network, that means it works on 0 to 5 volts. The high side will switch from 2 volts to around 2.7. So you hook that your multimeter, you're going to get an average around 2.7 volts on the high side. On the low side, if you connect your multimeter to terminal 14 in a good ground, it's going to give around 2.3 volts. And they should add up to 5 volts. They both switch from 2.5 below and 2.5 above. So that's why it's the high and the low side. And if you connect your multimeter, if the network is working properly and you have modules communicating, you should be able to get 2.7 and 2.3. Some of the networks might work slightly different, but they're always going to add up to 5 volts. But the average of most manufacturers is going to find around these particular values. So, if you hooked up your meter and you're not getting any reading, like for example, if the wires are shorted together, you're going to get 2.5 volts on both the high and the low. If you want to check for voltage at the high side, you connect your meter to a ground. It could be any terminal between 4 or 5. So if I choose 4, that's a ground. And terminal 6 is your high side. Right now, the network, it's asleep so if we if I cycle the ignition I should be able to see the network waking up and that's measuring 2.7 on the high side so if I move my lead to the low side which is 14 gives me around 2.3 roughly around almost to 2.3 and that should add up to your 5 volts Okay, so let's say if one of the communication lines gets shorted to ground. What's gonna happen if you connect your multimeter, you might measure around zero volts. Whatever happens to one terminal is gonna affect the other terminal. Whatever happens to the high side will affect the low side. So if the high side gets shorted, it's gonna affect the reading on the low side. If the low side gets shorted, it's gonna affect the reading on the high side. So if you connect your multimeter and you're not looking at the specified values, and you're measuring zero volts, you could potentially have one of the lines shorted to ground. All right, so if we connect your multimeter, terminal four and terminal six, check for voltage. Our meter right now is displaying 2.4 on the high side. And if I go on the low side, it also gives me 2.4. The system, it's 
going to sleep. So if I cycle the ignition, there it is. 2.4 on the low side and 2.4 on the high side. They're not fluctuating. So there is some activity, but it seems like they're both are giving roughly around the same voltage. That might indicate that they're shorted together, but there's, there's another way to find out. And if see that's the case, which is your resistance test. So if I cycle the ignition, the system wakes up. Voltage wise, they're both the same. They could potentially be shorted. That's why the resistance test will help you and will let you know if these terminals are connected together or not. So if you switch the leads to resistance across six and 14, that's because they're shorted. So that's why you get that 2.4 volts on the high side and the low side. So they're not switching. You're only getting them two terminals shorted together. And resistance test proves that. 